The views and opinions expressed on any programme are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the programme and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Good afternoon, thank you for joining us here in FRC Media. The November 7th election is coming up shortly and we're speaking to as many candidates as possible between now and then. So when you go to the polls and vote, you can make an informed decision when you do so. Joining me today is someone who joined us for the preliminary, preliminary election, easy for me to say, current sitting uh, city councilor seeking a third term, Michelle Dion. Councilor, thank you for joining me. I appreciate thank you. It. So um, you finished, I believe, eighth in the preliminary. Correct. Um, good showing. Obviously, still more work to, to be done. So how are you approaching the final stretches of the campaign? Well, I think the uh, candidate forums, having these opportunities are helpful. Um, I've been out there putting up my signs so people are aware that I am running, um, going to different events, fundraisers, uh, being out in the public and mixing with people as much as you can. Yeah, you know, um, the turnout was low for the preliminary, I believe 12, 12 and a half percent. And there was, uh, at, at our city council forum, um, I don't know if it was your panel or the other panel talked about how uh, there doesn't seem to be as much visibility for candidates. Um, we all know that signs don't vote, but it just mm -hmm. seems, like, seems like it's just been a quiet season. Have you seen that? And I guess how do you overcome that to try to get people out? I find this, this has been exceptionally quiet. Okay. Um, you almost wouldn't even know that there was an election coming up. Um, total opposite of the, of the last, you know, the other times that I ran. I think, and, I and it was the second forum that right. that subject right. came up. I really believe that social media has changed everything. Mm. People feel like they can reach everybody through social media. Not necessarily true. Mm. As much as there are many, many people on Facebook, etc. Yep. There are also a lot of people who aren't. Um, and I think there's a lot of maybe older voters that care less about Facebook and would prefer the grassroots type campaigns. Um, but again, you often hear people say, oh, well, nobody's knocked on my door. But I don't think people take into consideration that the city of Fall River does have 90,000 people who mm. live here. Right. Um, you can door knock, go neighborhood to neighborhood for days and weeks and still never see right. everybody. Um, but at the same token, we also live in a different world. And I think a lot of people today are afraid to open their doors. Mm -hmm. So I think we just have a lot of contributing factors to what's changed the nature of campaigning. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, uh, prior to our interview, you recorded a, a statement, a three-minute statement that we afford all candidates uh, running. And you mentioned, I believe you mentioned this in the preliminary, that your focus is the taxpayers of Fall River and fiscal responsibility is probably one of your key tenets, correct? Mm -hmm. That would be correct. Yes, I have always fought for the taxpayer. I've always tried to scrutinize everything, look at everything logically, and ultimately take the votes that I believe best help the taxpayers and the city of Fall River. Um, I'm a fairly conservative person, and I look at government similar to the way I look at my own finances. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you, hope you, you hope you have enough money. You do the best with what you have. You try, you try not to overextend yourself. Um, you know, the fact that we're still putting one-time monies into the budget is concerning to me. Mm -hmm. You know, if I had to borrow money every year to pay my bills, that would be a problem. And it would become a bigger problem every year that went on. Yeah. So, so yes, um, I, I try very hard to see the end result and, and how the future will be affected by what we do financially. And speaking of uh, finances, a lot of city residents are having a tough time making ends meet. I believe we talked about this again in, in, in the preliminary, that uh, you know inflation being what it is and housing affordability is an issue, not just in Fall River, it's across the country now. Um, but you know, how do you foresee affordable housing in Fall River? Some candidates will say we have enough, some candidates say we need to do more. What's your view? 
Well, I think very often, and I pointed this out the, the other night at the forum, people confuse low income mm -hmm. with affordable housing. Those are two separate categories. Um, we do have people who work who are above the income level for low income property, mm -hmm. but they certainly don't have enough money for the, um, for the, I'm um, thinking of the uh, market rate housing. Right. So they're, they're in the middle. That's where affordable housing comes in. That's where we need affordable housing. So the people in the middle can afford to stay and live in this city. And, and we're losing that. Um, you know, again, if somebody's paying four, five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars for a multifamily, certainly they have to charge appropriate rents. However, we have a very low per capita income level in this city, and, and people just truly can't afford it, and they are being forced out. You know, we have elderly, somehow, and, and this bothers me, because people don't, I, I suppose if you're not in the situation, some people just can't understand. Mm. Your pocket only has so much money in it. And when you reach the limit, you've reached the limit. And a lot of our seniors are there with the increase in taxes, sewer and water. Um, I mean, they, the affordability just isn't there anymore, hmm. even if their homes are paid off in full. And it's, it's very sad. We, you know, we have seniors that can't afford medication. They choose between medication and food. It, it's just not a good situation. Yeah, I want to shift to uh, public <coughs> safety. Um, it, it's funny, you talk about social media. Um, I'm sure we've both read, if you're on social media, the discussion about crime in Fall River and um, at the mayoral debate, which we had here, um, you know, Challenger Sutter saying, you know, we're, this is like the worst crime we've seen in a while, while the mayor's holding up a chart that says it's not as bad as, as it could be. Um, regardless, there's still an issue with number of police officers on the beat, where um, I believe we're still about, what, 20 or so short whatever the number is, pick at, a day, it could be different. At, yeah, at right? best. So, I mean, and I know that the council voted to approve the new patrolman's uh, union contract, which provides for help in terms of training and an increase in pay, but how can we get more people to be invested in a career of law enforcement? Well, I think it's a societal issue now, and, so, and, and in the last couple of years, um, policing has be become very difficult. Mm. Everything they do, every move they make is scrutinized. Um, very often they're looked at negatively before they can show what they did was positive or correct. And not to say there aren't people that don't do the wrong thing. Yes, there are. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're a policeman. I don't care what you do in, for a living. There are good and bad in everyone. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the bad really hurt the good. However, with that said, um, yeah, people, I think, are afraid to take the job and not f fear, um, fear of litigation, fear of persecution, fear of always being scrutinized. Mm. You know, I believe that the body cameras help with that um, because at least you're going to get an accurate account of what happened mm. on both sides. Um, you know, it's one of those things. If Money isn't always the answer. Right. It's good to have, but it's not always the answer. You know, the, the police, well, not just the police, fire, EMS, in a municipality like this, they're taking calls. They're on the third floor. They're on the first floor. They're carrying people from the third floor to the first floor. We've, I believe the police department last year did over 50,000 calls. Uh, they, you, they can go to the suburbs, they can go to other towns, make the same money or more, have a third of the calls mm -hmm. and a third of the work. Yeah. So when you look at it in that perspective, yeah. kind of makes sense. You know, if, if you can make the same money or more, why would you put up with doing the kind of work that they have to do here? Yeah. A lot of them, obviously, it's because they really love the city and they want to stand by it. But I think that plays a big part in it as well. Yeah. Uh, for the last <coughs> moment um, I have you, um, you know, I asked you earlier about, you know, your approach to the campaign. Um, when you see people, when you do talk to people, you have a short window to sort of say, I'm Michelle Dion, vote for me, and here's why. What do you tell them? 
Well, basically, it, you know, the same concerns come up no matter where you are. And I do find to a certain extent, especially once you've been on the council for a time, um, people know you, they know your character if they follow politics yeah. at all. Um, and, and it's pretty generally the same, you hear the same theme all the time. It's the affordability, it's the mm. taxes, it's, I mean, everybody hears it. Uh, and you're right, and people are worried about crimes. You know, when three people are shot in this, I mean, when there's three shootings in the same day, people, it's scary. Yeah. Um, so, and I think that's what happens. You know, they, they start talking about that, asking, you know, you, my stance on it. Um, and we just have those discussions and you just try to do the best you can. And it's also good to have that dialogue, right? It is. Just for, for people to understand what's on people's minds. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, sometimes we don't do that enough. And a lot of times too, it is the face to face is good because we also know that there are people who don't watch city council meetings who hear things through the grapevine. Mm -hmm. And by the time it goes from the council meeting through the grapevine, it isn't even what it was when it happened. Right. So, very, so it also allows you the ability to, take, to correct the errors, correct the right. misunderstandings. Right. And sometimes that's really important. Yeah. Council <laughs> Michelle Dion, thank you for your time. All the best on election day. We'll talk soon. Thank you very much. And I am number 11 on the ballot. There you go. <laughs> And thank you for joining us here at FRC Media. Please make a point to vote on Tuesday, November 7th.